take an example uh, that consider the sample of 60 ABs was taken from a dam. The mean weight uh, of the ABs was 84.6. Given the population standard deviation is 16.8 grams, construct a 95% confidence interval and check the answer using technology. So now when you talk about the confidence interval, you're gonna find out that using the sample statistics, you're gonna find out actually which are the two values uh, according to 95% confidence interval that your mean will lie in those. So, so mean of this, now remember that this is mean of the population. Population mean using certain sample you're predicting. So it's like you're picking up certain sample based on that you're predicting in what interval or what like, you know, between those two values, your this mean will lie. That's what it's exactly is the confidence interval. Now, here, what's the most important is the central limit theorem. Now, before I go ahead on central limit theorem, it's just about, um, okay, so X bar, if X is normally distributed with mean of mean and variance as sigma square, then X bar, now, what is X bar act exactly? Now, if this X population is distributed according to mean mu, and variance of sigma square. Now, when you say X bar, actually, let's say if I pick up five sample from here and we take average. Now, if I take pick up five sample from other like you know, five different sample, it might be case that the sample average that I found is actually different. So X bar itself is a variable and sample mean, that's what we call the sample mean is actually normally distributed according to the central limit theorem with mean as mu, what, and the variance is uh, sigma square over n. This is this is the central limit theorem. So this this is the backbone of hypothesis testing, and this is also the back, backbone for the confidence interval. Now, when you talk about the confidence interval for this example, now what is the standard procedure? So what I'm just going to quickly do is uh, I'm just going to write down the formula for which uh, you can use that formula, and then you can use technology as well. So suppose if I took 60 samples and we found that the sample weight is 84.6. So my X bar will be normally distributed according to 84.6 comma and standard deviation, what we notice is 16.8 um, uh, square over N that is 60. So this is gonna be the variance 16.8 square over N. So this is how the distribution of sample mean will be according to the central limit theorem. Now, when you're writing out the, the, the confidence interval manually, it is X bar minus Z sigma over root N. So sig Z sigma over root N here, that's the part, and X bar plus Z sigma over root N. Now what exactly is Z, this value Z is? Now Z is actually will depend on this confidence interval. I'm, I'm just gonna show for 95% confidence interval, how do you find out? So firstly, let us just take an example. So we have all the other values set. So now, um, we'll just quickly go over on the calculator skill. Okay, so first thing what we notice here is that we got the sample mean already, 84.6. We've got the sample mean, that's X bar value. We got sigma over root 10. We got sigma over root 10 here as well. So what we, what is missing is the Z value. Now what we can do is to calculate Z value, since we know it's normal distribution, we go to inverse normal on calculator. So we go to inverse normal, uh, go to distribution, normal, inverse normal, Put the tail as put the first link here is variable and put the tail central and put the area as 0.95. So you're finding the finding the z values, sigma one and mean z. So what you notice is a z value that you're getting is actually 1.95. So z is take 1.9599, which is close to z's I, if I take 1.96. So for me, the confidence interval is gonna be 84.6. Um, minus 1.96, uh, or you could put this exact value. And sigma is 16.8 uh, over root 60. That's your lower bound. And the upper bound is gonna be um, 84.6 plus uh, 1.96 into 16.8 over root 60. So that's your, that's your upper bound of the confidence interval. Now, if you simplify this value, now let's just do this calculation quickly. So if I find the, find the exact values that we needed, so uh, the exact values, let's say 16.8 times uh, 1.96. So 1.96 uh, 
divided by um, divided by a uh, root 60. So root 60. So we get this answer, which is as 4.25. So 4.25. So 84.6, 84.6 minus 4.25. So we get the first value, which is 80.35. That's your lower interval. So 80.35. And the upper interval will be obviously this plus 4.25. So, so the upper interval is actually here. Uh, so 84.6, 84.6 uh, plus uh, 4.25. So that comes to 88.88.85. So 88.85, that's your upper interval. Now let's see how do we get this in in uh, the calculator as well. So when you do the in the calculator, so you go under uh, statistics. You don't need to do any of these stuff. Just did for your understanding. So go on, a, go on an interval. Go on an interval, because here the mean and standard deviation for population has been given. You use z-test. Use z-test. Uh, so here what we get is one sample. Confidence level is ninety-five percent. Sigma, which we got, is uh. 16.8, that's the standard deviation for the population. Sample mean I got is 84.84.6. So 84.6, you're gonna take N as 60 samples and then just execute. So you're gonna get this 80.35. You can see this is the lower value. 88.85 is the upper value. And when you do the width of the interval, if I find out the width of the interval is nothing but this minus this. So when I do the width, the width is going to be 88.85 minus 80.35. And if you do at this stage, the width of the interval is nothing but 2z sigma over root n. Because if I subtract this, x bar and x bar get canceled, this minus and minus this will become 2z sigma by root n. So this can be some of the very helpful stuff for the, the calculation of the interval. Now, here is the diff other different type of example, basically, where your confidence interval concept is applied. A researcher wishes to estimate the mean weight of adult catfish in uh, crayfish in um, Australian waters. She, uh, she knows that the population standard deviation is 2250.5. How large the sample must be uh, uh, at 95% confidence interval to obtain the width for width of 140 grams? Now I just discussed that the confidence interval is actually x bar minus z sigma over root n and x bar plus z sigma over root n. Now when you take the difference, we get the confidence interval width that is two z sigma over root n uh, is the width and that should be 140. Now here we also got the z value like using inverse normal. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, go to inverse normal, put the tail central, tail central, and uh, so what you get is tail central, put the area as 95% and you'll get Z as 1.9559 or something. So Z value we already got from there. So I'm not gonna repeat again. So two times 1.9559 times Sigma is nothing but uh, let's say 250.5. So Sigma is 250.5 over root N. So root n, that's what you have to calculate the value of n, which is 140. And so if I do one thing is if I calculate root n here, which is gonna be two times 1.9559 uh, times 250.5 over 140. So 140, so this is your root n value. So when you find the value of exactly n from here, you get n close to 49. So, so that's how you do, if you find the sample size when you have been given the confidence interval width. So basically the other type of uh, the distribution that we have to do is in case where uh, we have to find the confidence interval or where um, the mean and the deviation for the population is not given. Rather than that, the sample mean and sample variance is known to us. How do we do that? So in that case, we assume that there is, um, if the data follows normal distribution, then the t distribution is actually with um, 
there is a specific type of t distribution that also matches like a bell curve which has got which is generally distributed with the um like the degree of freedom which is n minus one times the value n minus one uh value so let's say if you took n values the degree of freedom is n minus one so let's just take an example properly to understand this concept so here is the example now let's say in this case you've been given just the raw data so you you don't have anything uh so something called as the mean and deviation for the entire population so you just have been given the data for the for the uh, i mean the raw data so what we do is in such cases we we have this formula which i i highly recommend students do not use this but just in case if you if you get some like problems based on calculating interval size or i mean the sample size we can just do that so <clears throat> what we do is in in first case is i'm going to explain you how to do this on technology directly so let's just feed all these values in the statistics table of a calculator so now when you feed this uh, first thing what you're going to do is you go under statistics you i have already prefed this value so you can see that you can feed all these values all the 30 values it would have taken quite a lot of time so i already fed this under list 1 what you could do is now after that you go to a uh, i intr interval now you take t interval you don't take z so take t because your mean and variance for population is not given so t of course this is one sample now you select now sometimes your calculation is on this variable where you have to manually feed the sample mean and the standard deviation and all so what you do is you directly uh, take the variable uh, make the list list is um confidence level is 98% they have given the question and list one and your frequency is all one and if you execute this you can see clearly that answer is coming to 15.28 so so your sample your population mean will be between 15.28 and uh and the the 16.51 so that's how you basically do this calculation directly on technology now what we can do is we can do this also on using the manual approach the way we did for the z distribution first by finding the the t value because the formula here is actually the sample mean is between x bar minus t um sn minus 1 over root n and x bar plus t um sn minus 1 over root n now what what exactly is the t and what is the sn minus 1 i'll just quickly go over this so when you do when you do calculations on your calculator let's say i am not doing anything i just i'm just calculating the let's say x variable list one its frequency is all one uh i'm just doing some simple raw calculation so when you look at this the x bar that you notice that x bar we got is 15.89 that's that's your this value here then you're going to take uh, the deviation now if you look at the deviation there are two values there this is one this is this is referred as bias sample deviation this one which is sx on ecalc actually is sn minus 1 it's also referred as unbiased uh, sample deviation so when you do this here what we get is 15.89 minus now still we have to get the t value i'm, I'm going to show how to get the t value so sn minus 1 is nothing but 1.36 of 52 over root n which is nothing but 30 samples you've taken and x bar which is 15.89 uh, plus t times uh, 1.3652 over root 30 so just one thing that we are missing is the t value and how do we calculate the t value so let's just calculate the t value quickly now so to get the t value what you're going to do is you just go on a distribution uh, go to t inverse t and you put the area now since you're doing at 98% confidence interval so your this left tail area is 0.01 so what we do is point put 0.01 here is the uh, area and we get degree of freedom is n minus 1 and execute so 2.46 um is a t value so that goes here so 2.46 and 2.46 and if you do the calculation you get the exact confidence interval with so that's how you do the the a uh, confidence interval for for the samples where the population and sample variance uh, population and uh, the uh, the population deviation and the variance is not known 